Aha! Fucking finally! Oh my god! I did not suck. I did not fucking see that. Oh Jesus! Okay, so I think this. Yeah, there we go. And now I can add the missing picture. There we go. Open. Oh. Ah. Yes, I will take that. Oh my god, I feel so stupid. I'm supposed to take this too. I didn't think you could grab that. I clicked on it a bunch of times. Uh, god damn it. I should have known. I should've, it did kind of stick out. I should have done something. But I could totally... Totally didn't cheat here. But you can totally use this to get this thing. Which I kind of figured. It's a key! Oh, this must be the study key. Perfect. Maybe there's a final chess piece in there. Because I don't think that puzzle's gonna work unless we have all three pieces. I gotta figure out what position to put them in. I really don't understand who we're supposed to be getting a check. I thought it was the Black King, but it could be the White King for all I know. A lot of those moves seem like they're setting myself up for failure. The key slides naturally into the lock, which opens as you turn it. Alright, finally some progress. The study feels set apart from the rest of the house, everything being made of expensive wood like oak and mahogany. Oh, I see we have a, uh, <laughs> a wood connoisseur. Perfect. Great. Got a lot of books we can read. We got all three chess pieces. Let's look around here first. It's a serviceable if it's it's a serviceable, if utterly outdated personal computer. You can use this to access the internet or maybe a knowledge database on a CD ROM. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is an old computer. You open your favorite search page and think of subjects to enter. Okay, we already did photo, music, music. Why would I look up music? Oh, is that for the cassette tape player? Probably. I, I know what I know how that works. Dogs. What do I, what do I need with dogs? You type dogs and hit enter, shivering at the thought of today's earlier incident. Oh, that's right, the rabid poodle or whatever. After scrolling through the results, you choose a promising looking information hub. You're presented with three options. Breeds. The breed list is comprehensive. After a brief perusal, you self-consciously select Poodle. The images look vaguely similar to the canine you met earlier, but none of them have quite the same insane gleam in their eye. Appropriately, there's also plenty of useful information about the breed. Temperament, intelligence, famous poodles and history, and everything else anyone could possibly ever want to know about poodles. There's nothing about insatiable bloodlust, though. You question Fifi's pedigree. Why am I looking this up? <laughs> Socially, dogs operate in a pack structure. At the top of the pack is the Alpha, the strongest dog in the group. Alphas are established after a show of power or ability. When faced with proof of an Alpha's strength, weaker animals have no choice but to submit. This is a common behavior in most pack animals, certainly all dogs and similar species. Wasn't that disproven? Like, I... I remember hearing the guy who came up with the Alphas concept uh, was, uh, came out and said, Oh, I was actually wrong about my findings, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. That always seemed correct to me. Feeding! Tired of supermarket foods filling your beloved pet with chemicals and byproduct meal? With Yum Yum Pet, or with Yum Pet's new veterinarian recommended scientific well development formula, those days are over. We start with whole proteins, nature's healthiest and most delicious proteins, 
and we add some wholesome fruits and vegetables proven to benefit your pet's coat, energy level, and ear health. And that's it. No chemicals, no wheat, soy, or gluten byproducts. You wouldn't feed your child junk food, so why do it to your pet? New well development formula. Only from Yum Pet. Uh, you delete the URL and prefer to enter something new. Okay. Uh, I think this is just like a hint or something. A hint menu. I don't know why that information was pertinent though. Papers. You sift through the piles of un. If you sift through the piles and find a worthy specimen, straighten it out. You get ready to read. To whom it may concern, on the last eve of Friday, on the eve of last Friday, I had the irredeemable displeasure of dining at your establishment. One walk the tiger. While the service had its own issues, I was it was adequately typical of venues of this ilk, so I would not deign to tell you your business. That said, the troubling quality was your food. I ordered the Malang Malang chicken, which is my go to item on your menu. And while the dish was for the most part pleasantly uneventful, the penultimate piece of fried fowl was quite curious. I suppose there's no delicate way to put this, but to be blunt, it was shaped like a giraffe. I was so tickled by this occurrence that I waited an embarrassing long amount of time before devouring it. I'd been left in my car and was, wasn't halfway home before who should startle awake in the back seat but my grandfather. It seems I'd forgotten entirely that he wanted to accompany me to dinner. We'd been planning it for weeks. And believe you me, he is just the type of person to be amused by giraffe-shaped chicken. In closing, I'd like to ask you if the peculiar chicken is an intended element of the dish, as I've never noticed it prior. If this is intentional, consider this a formal request to have giraffe chicken lined up for next Thursday. I will be returning then with my grandfather, and our plan at this time is for him to join me in the restaurant. Given your role in the aforementioned mix-up, I believe this to be a reasonable concession. Thank you for your understanding. Theodore M. Ingram. What the fuck was that about? What what does this have to do with anything? What, what that it was just that was just bizarre. What the fuck? Okay. Uh about you gave me a giraffe shaped chicken. Uh my grandfather fell asleep in the back seat. We we like giraffe shaped chicken. Zero stars. Okay. Uh moving on, I guess. You sit through the piles and find a worthy specimen, straight out. Oh, is this the same one? I think this is the same one. Okay, uh, what? Manual. Okay, that might be useful. What's in the manual? You crap open... You crap open. You crack open the book and flip to a dog-eared page. Order of operation. First, place batteries in the back of player. Second, open the cassette door and place the cassette inside until it clicks. Take care that the top of the cassette is facing down. Lastly, close the cassette door. Press play to continue listening to music. That was incredibly pointless. Why did I need to read that? Who doesn't know how to put batteries into a cassette player? Like the easiest things to use. I know maybe maybe there's like a kid out there that doesn't know how a cassette player works or what a cassette player is, but I'm pretty sure they could probably figure it out. I don't need a book for that game. Come on. Thick book. You crack the book and flip to a random page. Some legends claim a gargoyle saliva turns its prey to stone, leading experts to speculate the side effects of an all-rock diet. Okay, I guess that might be useful. Another book. You crack open the book and flip to the first page that captures your eye. Another long-standing myth is the mirror demon. This can be found across many cultures. In the most interesting versions, the creature cannot leave its mirrored prison. It is actually attacking its victim's image in said mirror. I think that's a reference to a Goosebumps book. That is useful. You crack the book and flip it to an interesting looking page. 
It's not uncommon for one or more ghosts to populate an area of spiritual significance. Frequent haunt areas include childhood homes, schools, playgrounds, and points of passing. Cool. Novel. You crack the book and flip to this page. Barely serious depression. The year had taken its toll. He moved across the room to the chair where he spent most of his time these days. Sitting, he stared ahead at the same view he saw every day. This was his reality now. Room chair, view. He chanced to look at his watch. 3.33 p.m. February 29th, 2004. That year. This year. 2004. He wondered if he could only remove this year from the calendar like it never existed. Would things be different? Wow, I can uh, unironically... Wow, it's actually 3.33 right now. Holy fuck. I can, I can get behind that statement, though. Yeah, I, can, I, can, I feel your pain, buddy. Sometimes. I think that might have been a hint towards that puzzle we did with the ghost girl. Piano. The piano is a sturdy and finely polished antique. A small plaque indicates it was manufactured by Shriek and Toggles. Hey, I know that's a reference to piano lessons can be murder. That's cool. Can I play it? You take time to sit down and play your celebrated rendition of Chopsticks. <laughs> oh, Chopsticks. When I was in band class, that song was banned from ever being played, and if you played it, you'd get kicked out of the class. Oh, that was always hilarious. You seek solace in your bedroom. Alright, let's play some chess. Okay, uh, I'm gonna venture a guess here. I'm gonna say we'll put the Queen here. We'll put the rook here. And we'll put the knight here. Nothing happened. You must have placed one of the pieces wrong. Hmm. Well, I mean, anything I put there is going to be taken out by this knight. And I don't really think this knight can do anything except take him out. Swap it. Huh. Okay. Well, that is the king right there. Or is that the king? That look, I think that's the king there. Huh. Well, I'm not really sure then. Is there like another spot? Huh. Suddenly those. Th it's gonna only be those, so I'm... Hmm. Okay, I don't get this puzzle, then. That, that should be the answer. The final piece in place, you hear a small click as the lower compartment slides open. Okay, I mean, I guess that works. The knight would take out that knight. Uh, the rook would take the king. The queen would take the pawn. Huh, okay. I mean, yeah, I guess. That other way would have worked too, though, I think. Aha! The cassette player. Alright. 
Hopefully I can figure out how a cassette player works. Because apparently the game thinks I'm too stupid to be able to figure that out. We pop the batteries in the cassette player, each one slotting into place. Okay, good. We're finally using up items. Uh, cassette. Aha, you tried flipping the tape over. Yep, it was upside down. Fits perfectly now. Alright. Down to three pages again. Good. Okay. You know, realistically, for that uh, key that I got, I totally could have used the tongs to grab that. I mean, come on. Alright, ghost. Prepare to... Prepare to listen to the music. You press play and a funky tune plays from the speakers. This cassette has speakers? What are the headphones for? The boy smiles, swaying back and forth to the rhythm. He vanishes, his presence bounding away from the house. A door directly above you then locks with a loud THUNK! Awesome. Progress. I'm loving it. I only had to look up, like, that one thing, because I could not, for the life of me, find that fucking picture and coat hanger. Alright, time to go into my parents' bedroom. It's an overwhelmingly creepy twist on your parents' bedroom. Swords? Two cross swords hang from the wall. Now we're talking! Hell yeah! Let's turn this into a first-person slasher. You attempt to pull the swords off the wall, but they won't budge. What a shame. They'd make today a lot easier. Could you imagine if we could get, like, a sword in this? Take that, beast from the east! You kneel down and locate the chest combination lock. You need to input the correct code. Okay, I don't know what the code is. The artwork on the wall is... different. The signature says, Claude Moaning. in the closet. Oh, an endless void! I love those. Usually it's your parents' bed. Right now you're not so sure. It's best to assume the normal rules apply. No jumping. Okay. Look at the pillows. The biggest, comfiest pillows you've seen in a while. Which means they're probably slobbering monsters of some kind. Okay, let's try sleeping. You lie down, hoping to find the comfortable grooves you're accustomed to. They're not there. The bed is seriously uncomfortable. Okay. Window! It's the dead house window. The large window is the most striking element of the room. Mom loves it to open it, open it on humid summer nights. You undo the latch and swing the window open. Oh. All right, yeah, the thing. Thick, gummy liquid. Oh, I could put it in this. All right, and that turns stuff to snow or something. Maybe I can use it on the monster blood. From earlier. Hold on, let's, uh... Smash this open. You wedge the screwdriver into the coupling and then use it to leverage open it up. I can't read. Leverage open! Yes, good! Get fucked, monster blood! You hurriedly open the bottle and empty its contents into the green slime. Tension hangs in the air. Oop, you accidentally pour it on yourself and fucking die. Oh, no, actually, the spots of the gargoyle and saliva touch solidify, hardening into a gray stone. The effects spread until the entire floor is covered in petrified sludge. Awesome. You should be able to reach the hatch now. You slide open the hatch. You pull down the ladder. With one last push, you throw yourself into the attic.
The attic is about as spooky as you would expect. Dirt, grime, cobwebs, and a big ornate mirror. It's the most expensive mirror you've ever seen. The frame is extremely ornate and metal. Iron, maybe? The image has a depth to it. You've never... a depth to it you've never experienced. Piñata? The colorful, the colorful remains of a piñata lie broken in the corner. Can I look at it? No thanks, you're not that desperate for candy. Cavity City comes to mind as another option. You hear muffled laughter. Oh great, who's in here with me? Mom's old exercise bike. She put it together herself and that was enough of a workout for her. It's been here ever since boxes. You sift through the boxes, giving each one a cur cur cursory, gl cursory glance. Nothing jumps out of you. Man, I cannot read today. Oh, God. You feel an icy hand on your shoulder. Time to take a look at yourself, pal. You spin to face the reflection, holding out the hand mirror you've been carrying. The image shudders and crack, and a crack explodes across the glass. A faceless voice screams. The mirror shatters and everything falls silent. Goosebumps? It's a Goosebumps story called Let's Get Invisible. You used to read Goosebumps all the time when you were a kid. Aren't I playing a kid, though? Of course! You knew that dummy on TV looked familiar. It was Slappy, the evil ventriloquist dummy. Pick up the children's horror novella and notice the author's name, R.L. Stein. If only you had a way to get a hold of him somehow, maybe he'd know what to do. If his Goosebumps monsters are real, everyone's in a lot of trouble. You better get to the mall. Right, are we finished with the house then? I think that's it. Jump. You make one big leap, slamming your feet back on the floor. Dust explodes upwards into your eyes, nose, and mouth. You walk back downstairs, feeling much lighter than you have since arriving. The rooms are still off, but it feels less like a haunted house and more like your house again. What am I going to do with the book? And why was that book the one that appeared? That's not even... I mean, there was a mirror in Let's Get Invisible, but there was no mirror... Well, I guess there was. Ugh, whatever. You hop down the stairs, mind racing for a way to reach... Mind racing for a way to reach the mall when you when a solution stumbles clumsily through the door. You slam directly into your brother as you leap down the stairs. He barely seems to notice. Hey, Quidjibo. Glad you're here, dude. You see all this crazy stuff going on? Ask about Chad. I know, right? Are you okay? Uh, not really. He says while looking around, making sure the coast is clear. I realized something about mom and dad. Why they've always been acting so weird like why they've been acting so weird lately. They're monsters? Oh no, mate, of course, it makes perfect sense. When do those creatures replace our parents? Huh? No, no, our parents have always been the same. What I was trying to say is is even more shocking. I'm not their son at all. I can prove it, Quijibo. You'll see. Mom keeps important documents in the trunk at the foot of their bed. Go up and get my birth certificate. Normally, you'd completely ignore everything he just said. Even by Chad's standards, this latest theory is ridiculous. However, today is it just might work to your advantage. I'll make you a deal. Since you're my brother, you know, probably, I'll go get your birth certificate. But afterwards, you have to give me a ride to the mall. I know how to stop these monsters, but I can't do it without your help. Do we have a deal? Sounds like we have a deal, then. You get the birth certificate, so my fingerprints are nowhere to be seen. Or, uh, I'll drive you to the mall afterwards. Good? Remember, the certificate's upstairs in Mom and Dad's room. And the trunk. The code to unlock it is 1992. Slowly turning into Snape with that fucking voice. 
Mr. Kujibo, please turn to page 1992. Mr. Porter, I went down the wrong hallway. Mr. Porter, stop looking at the rug and go into your parents' bedroom. I don't really have the Chad voice down. <laughs> Like, totally, dude. Yeah, that's like a California girl, but whatever. We'll use that for Chad. Kathunk! The trunk's locked disengages and a lid, and, the, and its lid pops open slightly. You lift it the rest of the way. Among other things, your brother's birth certificate is in the trunk. That must be what he was after. You carefully roll up the birth certificate and head downstairs. Let's take a look at this. Your brother's birth certificate clearly indicates that mom and dad are his parents. Well, alright then. That... This is weird, but okay. Like, shot. Mom and dad aren't even my parents, man. <laughs> like, shot. What's up, dude? Your brother Chad. He has a wild theory about his upbringing. He looks like Dax Shepard. <laughs> Come on, that's it. that's totally Dax Shepard. But like, if he was more of a stoner than he probably already is. You happily present the birth certificate, eager to receive your end of the bargain. Oh, I guess I was wrong, he says, he says sadly, pouring, poorly hiding that the air has been knocked out of him. Chad shakes his head. I was so certain. You clear your throat. So about that ride to the mall? All right. He's certainly shaping up to be a pleasant companion. If that's... If it's that important, let's get going. He leaves the house, shuffling to his car while you follow. He hopes that the drive improves his mood. Wait, so where does Chad sleep in this house? Because the other bedroom said it was a guest room. Does he, like, not live here anymore? The vibe in here is too much, so we head back outside for some air. Standing outside the haunted version of your house. Your brother Chad's here too. He looks confused by the whole ordeal. Uh, you can tell he's trying not to show it. Right, let's go ahead and uh, save the game. Brother! Brother! Do you still need a. <clears throat> like, Shy, you still need a ride? Carrie didn't need the extra miles, but. Let's go! Thanks, bro, you say. He forcefully nods towards the car, quite serious. You roll your eyes and add, Thanks, Carrie. That's more like it. So where's the old girl taking us? The mall. Like I said, I have to reach the town center Galleria. I heard something about the mall being closed today. You sure you want to go? I'm sure. That's the whole reason we're going there, remember? Oh, of course. Must have spaced. Both hop into the car and start towards the mall. The mall's parking lot's completely empty when you arrive. Slappy and his monsters must already be inside. You get out of the car, the door echoing as you shut it. Chad places a hand on your shoulder. Good luck in there, bro. I don't understand all that stuff you said, but these monsters sound pretty nasty. If anyone can stop Slippy, it's you. <laughs>